Starting off this video with a little bit of talking because I got some explaining to do um, on how this is all gonna come together here. My plan for this is to get the rear trunk gutters, drip rails, whatever you'd like to call them, um, fully welded on the car. As you guys saw in the last video, I went through, had to trim them up in order to get that piece for the back of the tail panel here made. So those are trimmed and I'd like to weld the tail panel to the quarters as well. But in order to do that, I have to go through and measure out and make sure these corner pieces here will fit on both sides. Now the corner pieces stick out a little bit because the deck lid does overhang. So that has to line up. And then you also need the shape of the quarter panel itself here to line up with them. And then you need both sides to match. So it's a little bit of work to get everything to fit here. I ended up making a template of the factory ones here. These are just some sort of pop metal, so I will not be using these, mainly because I'm gonna go ahead and make my own, and that'll be a part of the spoiler. So it'll kind of be all one piece. I think it'll look pretty cool. So we're gonna set those off to the side, but I did go ahead and make a template off of those. And measurement-wise, these are kind of weird because it changes width as it goes across. So like right here, it's one and five eighths. Like right here, it's one and five eighths. It gets wider here and then it gets wider in the middle. I always thought that looks kind of goofy. So I went ahead and traced the outside line onto my template here. And then, like I said, the medium point measurement wise ended up being about one and five eighths. So I went ahead, just measured one and five eighths all the way across, took my template, measured it to both sides on the tail panel in the corners there. So this guy fits good right here. It also fits good on that side there. And like I said, it's a lot of work just to get these aligned. Um, AMD puts a basically a little slot in the corner of these quarter panels. That way you can adjust it so you can push it in or if you need to make it bigger, you can do that. You kind of just gotta bend it to shape. There's no really other way around it. And like I said, the trickiest part of this is, is getting the bottom line of this corner piece to line up with the gap on the bottom side of the deck lid right here. So you can see that line right there. And then also getting it to line up with the radius on the end of the tail panel itself. So there's a lot that goes into just getting these corner pieces aligned. I spent a lot of time last night just in the zone, was knocking both of them out. And I took the calipers, set them at one and five eighths, drug my line across and they line up pretty good. So that side I got relatively quick and then I had to come through and make this side match. Took some more time than I would have liked, but we're looking pretty good. Just made my template for the corners, which will go on there and then go on that side. Check that, that looks good as well. So went ahead and scribed my line, as you could see on the quarter panel itself. And that's because this is two layers of metal that originally would just be spot welded to each other here. Since I got that line scribed on there, I'm gonna go through, cut that portion off the quarter panel, and this will be a nice butt weld all the way across it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tail panel off, trim those corners on the quarter panels, prep this, get everything you know set back in place, tacked together, double check measurements, and hopefully I can get this welded on here today. Spent all morning prepping the tail panel, getting the last few things ready for it. Trimmed up the quarter panels as well. And as you guys can see, it is now officially tacked in place. So pretty happy with how it's going so far. Went ahead, did my scribe lines on here, 
made sure measurement wise from the top of this radius to the top of the cord panel it's one and five eighths all the way across we're looking good so i'm happy with that one thing i did want to mention is obviously from the factory these panels are supposed to be sandwiched on top of each other and i had these self tappered together just to kind of hold it in place and what i did is left a little tab that's underneath the quarter panel right there that way i can put the self tappers back in place so i didn't lose the perfect spot for this tail panel here so i'll pull these out real quick Take a small cutoff wheel to the back side, cut that little tab off there, cut that little tab off there. Go ahead and do that here. Get the last little bit of tack welds set on there. Go through a hammer and dolly it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the trunk gutters after that. Get everything tacked in place. And once everything is good, basically in this rear area, I'll go through and fully weld it up. Um, but for now, we're gonna go through, like I said, get everything set in place, tack it on, double, triple check everything, measurements with the template, and then uh, we'll think about welding it on for good. Just wanted to take a break to show you guys what I'm talking about with those little tabs with the Clicos I mentioned earlier in the video. Obviously before there would have been a lip that goes on top of this trunk gutter here. Um, that is all trimmed away. We're gonna go with a seamless look, but I left a little tab from when I had it clicoed on there. And I also had one in the back. Obviously that's cut off right now. I got that welded up, but you can see this helps keep it aligned. Cause if I didn't have those, you know, and this was just here, this could still pivot ever so slightly there. And I need it to line up exactly with the quarter panel and exactly with that deck filler panel with that gutter there. So it's a lot of just small gaps that I need to be perfectly aligned. So this helps it. Um, but as you can see, the closer we get to it, since it is double layer there, that is raised up. Obviously it comes out at an angle. This is basically where it was flush with the quarter panel. So through a tack there, I'll go ahead, pop this Clico out, trim that tab off, and then that should just drop down and get me that perfect 90 right there. So fully tacked in place now. I was really happy with the fitment on this one here and getting it all tacked in place. I didn't really have any issues with it. Just took my time. I'm gonna say per side to get to this point here. So going through trimming, you know, cutting, filing, doing a little bit here and there, and then getting it actually tacked in place. I probably have close to maybe, let's say three, hours give or take a little bit just per each side here so i did this one last night i did this one tonight it took me all night to get that on there so happy with how they came out and i still have to go through and make these side pieces obviously here this one i'm kicking myself because i cut a little bit too much off right here you could see that gap shining through so Maybe I'll use a little bit thicker filler rod, like 332nd rod right there, up until about this point, um, or I'll just add more filler of 16th rod. So we'll just kind of see. Overall, like I said, that's a big step. Next thing I need to do is build these side pieces here. Once I get those in place, I'll go through, pop this panel off, prep the backside with weld through primer to go on the flange up there. Make sure this is all good prep these corners, get these trimmed and fitted. And then once all that is good, go through, remeasure everything, toss the deck lid back on for the final time, double check my gaps all the way across the board. And then once that is looking good, can go through and finally weld these things on for good. So a lot of hours just into these small pieces here.
kind of in the middle of wrapping up these trunk gutters here, metal finishing wise, and I figured I'd show you guys kind of my process for getting these welds ground down. It's pretty simple, just using some basic tools. It just takes time, a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a little bit of precision. Because obviously, right, we have a 90 joint here with the weld in it right there. So you can see this section is getting pretty close. This is what it looks like when you hit it with about 80 grit on a DA and a little bit with the Dremel. Um, and then you just got to keep, like I said, taking time, moving back and forth. This section down here is getting close. You can see it's not totally perfect yet. Um, I got to get some finer bits to kind of get down in that area. This side over here is coming along pretty good. Uh, I got about two, two and a half hours just into this side right here, just metal finishing it so far. And that's at only 60 grit, so I gotta go through. And uh, I at least like to get it up to 120 to make it look pretty nice. Got a little bit more work to do with the Dremel there, um, but we'll see if the DA can kind of smooth that out there. Like I said, some pretty simple tools, just a little Dremel right there, using the handheld belt sander when needed. Um, basically just on the side parts here, and then just the DA. So some pretty simple stuff, like I said. Use the file occasionally. Um, it's tricky because you gotta use a round file, but you have to use both hands, one on this side and one on that side to kind of push it back and forth. So the tricky part with the Dremel is if you have kind of a cone bit like this right here, I generally use this, or there's some finer ones right here. So something kind of along the lines of this, or something along the lines of like this, you can see here, just anything that can get down in that little channel and smooth it out. If you're using the bigger cone bit like this though, you gotta angle it just right in order to hit the weld. Cause the last thing you want is to grind down the metal on this side or this side, right? You just wanna get the weld to smooth it down. So that's where the precision part takes place. And once again, that's the part that just takes time cause you can go a little bit at a time and then you kind of step up. So I'll go ahead, wrap this side up here. Probably got another hour's worth of sanding and grinding to get that all smooth. And then maybe by the end of the night, I can go through, touch up a few sections here and get this area wrapped up. Wrapped up everything on the rear end of the car here. So trunk gutters are fully welded on, fully metal finished. Corners are fully welded on and fully metal finish as well. I didn't film or time lapse the rest of it because like I said, it was just me grinding down welds, sanding them, metal finishing the rest of it here. But corner pieces turned out really nice. Very happy with how they're looking. Uh, shape wise, they both match side to side now. Measurement wise, they both match as well. So we got one of five eighths from the top of the quarter to the bottom of the radius here, all the way across. They are single layer now, so normal double layer spot welded sheet metal. So looks pretty good, plenty strong. As for the trunk gutters here, I spent hours upon hours with a Dremel, knocking down those welds, getting it to this point here. I ended up finding a smaller Dremel bit, a cone style bit to get in this lip right here. And I was able to knock down that radius to a smaller radius. I think it looks a lot better. It matches the factory style kind of down here and here. And if you step back and look at it, you're never gonna be able to tell. That was two pieces at one point. This area is all blended in here as well. So from the tail panel to kind of the back of the AMD trunk gutter pieces, I had to make a little square piece that ended up going somewhere along this line here. And then same thing up here, just a factory stamping. I'm not sure why they had a notch out of there, but that's what they did. If you go back or if you were paying attention earlier, you probably caught that. Wasn't able to get the DA down in this little channel here on the corners. Um, so it's shiny just because I hit that with a wire wheel on the drill. But with a little bit of body work, honestly, probably just some filler primer. Um, that'll look 100% perfect. Once it's all set and done there. Top of the tail panel here is looking smooth. That just took some hammer dolly work, a little bit of sanding. And trunk gutter on this side over here matches the other side as well. Quick look at this corner also. Got this part down here all smoothed out. Everything's looking pretty good. So all in all, 
This back area is not totally complete. I still got some other things I want to do, but in terms of the tail panel, that's complete. Got it welded to the quarters, got the trunk gutters welded to the top of it. Everything's all one solid piece now, so really happy with that. It feels nice to kind of check this whole project off the checklist here. You guys probably saw me prepping the deck filler panel here, and I was gonna go ahead and fully weld this on, but there's a couple of reasons I did not. Um, starting off with the easiest thing, this piece here, I have to go through, cut this off, and then make basically the other half of this lip to fill that in, make it look all seamless. So that should be a relatively easy project. Um, some of the more challenging pieces will be the actual gutter itself. Obviously this isn't sitting all the way flush right now, but the shape of this one does not line up with this one here. That's because this is meant to sit on top of this one. So I'm probably gonna have to go through, cut back, maybe an inch to an inch and a half where it's more flat before it starts to taper out and get bigger and then wider on the sides as well. And then I'm gonna have to go through and basically make my own gutter piece of this shape right here and we'll stitch that in the middle. So that's gonna take a lot of time in itself, but probably the biggest debate I was having with myself was whether or not to make pieces on the end to fill in this gap or not um, from the factory. There is a gap right here. And then underneath it, there is a piece of metal that basically takes a 90 degree bend going down. One on the quarter panel, those get spot welded together underneath. So that's how that's held together. I thought it would look cool if I made pieces on the end and then fully welded that up to make this all basically look seamless across the board. But then I had the deck lid on this the other day and realized it also looks kind of good because there's a gap obviously between the deck lid and the quarters and that runs basically all the way up in line with that gap right there and creates its own body line in a sense so i'm not totally sure what i'm going to do with the deck filler panel there first things first like i said it's make those trunk gutter pieces there get that other little tab cut off and then i guess i can go through and finally make a decision on those end pieces if i'm gonna make pieces weld that up or just leave it as is to go with the gap on the deck lid. Obviously, all the work that you guys saw in this episode here took a lot of time. I understand it's not the most exciting thing, but the end result, seeing that all together, is pretty exciting in itself. And I think stuff like this will be the difference between this car and other builds, hopefully setting this one apart. I know I should say small, very minor detail, but if you watch this and were interested, um, you'll probably take a look or at least notice the trunk gutters on other cars going forward, whether it's in videos or at a car show in person, anything like that. And hopefully you'll be able to see, you know, the difference between all this right here and kind of see my understanding and the vision behind it. Because once again, it is just a very small detail, but it's all these small details like this that are going to add up and hopefully make the big difference once it's all said and done.